Welcome to another edition of ProSoft Technology Video Training. The PLX51 DF1 ENI router is designed to aid in the process of integrating newer hardware platforms that support Ethernet IP to existing DF1 networks. The PLX51 router can facilitate peer-to-peer -peer communications between PLCs or SCADA systems on Ethernet and DF1, as well as enable uploading and downloading programs to those PLCs for those platforms. If peer-to-peer -peer functionality is all you need for your application, we also offer the PLX51 DF1 MSG Messenger, which is only for peer-to-peer -peer communication. Today we'll go over the general setup for the PLX51 and then we'll cover how to set up the gateway in DF1 slave mode. In this configuration, our gateway will act as a slave on the DF1 network, allowing a DF1 master to read and or write data to one or more Logix controllers. Essentially, the Logix controller will be seen as a DF1 slave by the DF1 master. It's very handy if you're upgrading from MicroLogix controllers or Slick 500s. This configuration process is the same for the PLX51 DF1 MSG Messenger. We'll cover downloading and installing ProSoft PLX50 configuration utility software, creating a new project for our gateway, configure the PLX51 for both the EIP and DF1 networks, and we'll use slave mode to enable communication between a DF1 master and our Logix controller. Let's begin. The first thing that we need to do is download and install the ProSoft PLX50 configuration utility software from the ProSoft Technology website. This is a free application that is used to configure the PLX51 module and will allow you to do all the necessary configurations and mapping to make the module an integral and useful part of your program. Once we have the files downloaded, install the PLX50 configuration utility to your PC by following the prompts. When it's done, we'll open up the configuration utility and open a new project. The first time you connect the PLX51 to your network, you'll need to launch the DHCP server and assign it an IP address on your subnet. It's this button here in the menu bar, and there is our gateway. Click Assign. And on the window that opens, I'll enter in an IP address that I know is available on the local network and click OK. The bar should turn green. This lets you know that the gateway has accepted the IP address and is now connected. So we can close this window. Next, right click on the New Project under the Project Explorer and select Add. On the Add New Device window, select which gateway you have. I'll select the DF1 router and click OK. We then come to the main configuration window. You can see that we have five tabs at the top. The general and serial DF1 tabs encompass the basic configuration for the gateway. And the other tabs will only be enabled depending on what mode you select. On the general tab, you can give the gateway an instance name and a description if you like. You then enter the IP address. Click the Browse button to the right of the address field to bring up the Target Browser, where you can see all the PLX50 gateways on your network. Select your DF1 module. It will have the IP address that you just assigned. Click OK, and the IP will appear in the address field. A little further down, we come to the Operating Mode Selector. With the DF1 router, we have four modes. With the DF1 Messenger, you'll have just two. For this tutorial, I'll set my gateway to DF1 slave mode, and this will activate the DF1 slave tab, which we'll get to in just a bit. Moving on, we'll click on the serial DF1 tab. This is where we configure the DF1 side of our gateway. It contains all the typical DF1 network settings. You want everything to match the settings of the DF1 device that you're connecting to. So for protocol, I'll select full duplex, Baud rate will be 9600, parity will be none, I'll set the error detection to CRC, embedded responses, uh, retry limits and timeouts, just set to whatever you need. The reply message wait is intended for situations where some older legacy controllers, if the response comes back too quickly, they'll miss it. So you can add a slight delay to responses to ensure that the controller is able to process it. I'll just leave it at 50 milliseconds. There are a few other options available. Node address is relevant for certain modes where it's possible for the module to appear as 
more than one node. Uh, enable store and forward is only relevant if you're using the DF1 radio modem protocol. Now we'll move on to the DF1 slave tab. Under Logix controller mapping, you'll select the Logix controller on the Ethernet side that you want to connect to. Give it a target name that will help you identify it. I'll name mine Water Station. Click the Browse button to use the target browser to select the controller that you want. Click OK and its IP address will appear in the field. If you have more than one controller you want to map, you can go ahead and add up to eight. At the bottom, under Logix Tag Mapping, you'll specify the node or nodes the PLX51 should emulate, and the corresponding data files will be mapped to the controller tags. First, enter the DF1 node that the PLX51 will emulate on the network. I've selected node 3. Next, enter the data file that node is expecting to read or write to. For me, it'll be N7. The target name corresponds to the Logix controllers identified above. So for me, it's Water Station. And then the target tag is the target controller tag in the Logix controller. So simply click the Browse button, and you can browse your Logix controller and find the appropriate controller tag. If you're not online with the controller, you can also manually enter the tag name. Now, no size is specified here, so you'll need to make sure that the target tag is big enough to satisfy the DF1 message size. In my example, the water status tag is an array of 10 integers. So now, if a request comes in from the master on the DF1 network for node 3, and it wants to read data file N7, the data will come from the water status tag in the water station controller at this location. And that should do it. We'll click the Apply button. And now the configuration should be ready to download to the gateway. So when you're ready, just right click on the PLX51 in the Project Explorer view and select Download. The module will receive the configuration and reboot. And now is a good time to save your project. If all the configuration information was entered properly, your DF1 master should now be able to read and write to the specified tags in a Logix processor. We have more videos covering the other configuration modes for various applications. If you have any questions or would like more information about the PLX51, DF1, ENI, and MSG gateways, use the link in the description to go to its product page or feel free to give us a call.